Hi everybody, it's Gina and I am back with another video. It has been a long, tiring couple of weeks with moving from one place to another, but we are 90% unpacked. Still a couple of things that I need to go through and determine if I want to have them out or should I put them in the storage shed because I don't have the room here to display everything that I would like to display so some of the things are just going to have to go in storage like my my sons my two sons have a lot of trophies so I think they may have to go into storage at least most of them I don't think I'll be able to display everything anyway I'm back and I'm just gonna do um, this is just gonna be a short short and sweet video before I go on with the video I just want to say thank you and welcome if there are any new supporters here anybody new that's watching watching this for the first time um, or if you're watching my channel for the first time my name is Gina and uh, I am an artist among many other things so you'll see videos based on art maybe gardening homeschooling lots of different things and um, I'm so glad you're here it's it's an interesting channel and you will learn a lot about me um, all of the different hats that I wear I don't have more than one channel this is it so but I'm glad you're here and uh, if you like what you see I really appreciate if you just click that red button that you see below and um, keep coming back to my channel for those of you who are regular supporters I appreciate you coming back and watching this video again and um, just wanted to say thank you and welcome okay so what's this video about today well I've been asked a few times where do you come up with ideas for your paintings majority of the time they are something I've experienced something I've gone through places I've been um, sometimes I see images in books and I thought I might think to myself you know that would make an amazing painting but the majority of my paintings are based on experience and uh, I'm sure I've shown you a few there's an angel painting that I did which is actually hanging right behind me so um, I can link that in here if you'd like to see it again but the one I want to show you today is um, it's just a little cabin and the, when I was going through and unpacking this uh, particular one kind of popped out to me and I said you know maybe I should go ahead and show this as the as an example of how I come up with with the ideas for my paintings I'm going to take a photograph of the off the photograph and as well as the painting so you get a better view of it in the video and then I will talk about how the painting happened Okay, so you should have seen an image which looked like this. This is the actual photograph, and it's a photograph of a cabin in North Carolina. There's a, a stream, river, like whatever it is you want to call it, that runs beside it. It's an actual place. And I thought this would be really neat to make a painting from. So. I'm going to go ahead and put in the photograph of the painting that I came up with and then explain how I came up with and how it developed into that painting. So you should have seen a close-up of the actual painting. And here's the, here it is. So what I'm going to do now is hold them up side by side and explain to you what I did. So here are, I'm hoping that they come across clearly because I don't want there to be a glare or anything. Alright, so here's the photograph. Let me see if I can, I may have to cut off a piece of the painting right there. I'm hoping that it's, it's clear for you. Okay, so here's the photograph and here's the painting. I kept the cabin pretty much the way that you see here, except I didn't put any vines 
climbing up on there. I just thought that would be a little bit too much of clutter. But I did leave the cabin. And it's got the chimney at the top, just like it does over there. And I kept the color. Now you can see in the background, there's the river or the rocks. I didn't make it as wide because I did not necessarily want the river to be taking over the majority of the, of the painting. So the cabin comes out this way a little bit more. And in the background, you'll see the trees. Same thing as in here, except I broke up the trees with a little bit of a broken down fence that you can see right here. And in the foreground, this looks a little empty, so I went ahead and I simply added a fence and a few more. Um, I kind of simplified all of the bushes that you see in the front. Just simplified those a bit. But by adding that fence, it gave the, the painting just a little bit more character. I thought that was a little empty in here. So this kind of pulls it all together. And it is an actual place, North Carolina. The name of this painting, well it went through kind of a transition from special place, um, another name I had for it was escape, because who wouldn't want to escape to? I think the glare is not now, who the who wouldn't want to escape to that little cabin in the woods? And ironically enough, where I'm living now, I will show you um, throughout the vi uh, different videos that I'm going to be posting. It's like a little cabin in the woods, my own little cabin, my own little escape. So, but I just wanted to share that with you because several people have been asking me, well, where do you come up with your ideas? So, this is just one, just a place that I've been. North Carolina, it's a little cabin, and I just simply added in that fence, simplified the bushes because you don't want too much clutter to take away from the actual focus of your painting. And the focus for me was the cabin, and you know, you always leave a light on in the window, right? And the window, the or the light in the window is actually done using. Um, fluorescent paint, which in just a small amount of it, so that when the lights are turned off, or actually I should say glow, uh, glow in the dark paint, so whenever the lights are turned off in the house, there's still that glimmer of light that shows from the painting. And I've done that with a couple of paintings that I've, you know, where I've painted houses, put a, just a touch of the glow in the dark paint in the windows, where it actually lights when the lights are turned off. Alright, so just wanted to share with you one of um just a little trick of my trick of the trade, I guess. A trick of my trade. Um yep, photograph and uh, here's the painting that came out of it. Now I'm gonna show you one more, just um one more that's based on an experience. Alright, so I'm hoping that this comes across well. This is a painting I did several years ago. Um, I'm going to say 11, 12 years ago? 13 years ago? It's been a while. Um, this is just a, a print of it. But this is called New Beginning. And this, was, this painting was done when I officially got my divorce. And um, you can see that there's uh, this is me in the foreground, and my ex is in the back, and it's basically me moving ahead with my life. I am smiling, and yes, I did have way back back then, and even just a few maybe last year, I did have quite a bit of curly hair. So, um, but. Um, Yes, this painting was done. It's called New Beginning. So I mentioned before that's another place where I get my my ideas for paintings is from experience. So this is one of my experiences. 
the name of that is New Beginning. Now, the other question I had, I've also had is how do I, you know, this whole abstract idea, well, one of my favorite paint, painters is Pablo Picasso, and I've always been intrigued with how he simplifies the, um, the human form. And uh, from the time I was younger, that has always been, I guess, my my thought, my, my perception is if I want something to look realistic, I would just take a photograph. My way of seeing things is in a more abstract form. So I have been doing the same thing, simplifying the forms. You can tell that it's a, a female. You can tell that it's a person simply because you know there's an eye, there's a mouth, there's hair, but it certainly doesn't look like me, and it doesn't look like anyone else. But that's the idea. So um, there's another. That's I guess my other trade secret. I do simplify form um, because I don't necessarily want them to look like a particular person, but I want to get the idea across. I guess my my style would be more of like an abstract representation if there's you know that that's how I would look at it so there's one from experience and then I'm going to share with you one that I'm going to be working on soon and I will definitely share that journey with you when I do the video but there's they have three pictures here as I was going through some magazines I I found some um, some interesting photographs so this one I'm going to be creating, a, I think, the idea of, well, she is supposed to be nude in the, you know, behind all of those vines. But I just thought that was really neat, and I think this would make a really neat painting. Um, her face, of course, will be simplified like the one I showed you a minute ago. And then all of these handbags and the vivid colors. Well, I won't tell you too much. I'm going to just let you see the process when I start to work with it, okay? Here's another one that I found, which was very elegant. So I'm going to be working with that one as well. And this one, I thought was really, really neat. And I'm going to be creating an abstract painting using this. I can, uh, the thing is, I can already see these paintings completed in my head. I can see all of the color, the form, everything. So, but I will definitely bring you along on that journey as I'm creating each of these paintings. So there's another way how I uh, get ideas for my paintings. So I've shared with you get ideas from places I've been, from experience, uh, experiences that I've gone through, as well as from different photographs in magazines. So I have hope. I hope I, that's given you a little bit of an idea of how I create, how my paintings come about. And if you have any further questions or things you'd like me to share about re relating to how I, you know, how I create my work, as far as the paintings are concerned, because I also uh, create sculptures. So um, if you have any questions, go ahead and share those with me in the comment section below, and I. So thank you for watching, thank you for being here, and I am always appreciative of your support, whether you are a newcomer or you are and have been a loyal supporter. So I will see you again real soon on another video, and I look forward to also watching your creations as they come into my inbox. Bye-bye.